The Story of Buddha, Short Stories for Kids Today we have a book named The Story of Buddha, Short Stories for Kids. I think they're so pretty, I hope you guys really enjoy it. I love it. Please give this video a like if you enjoy it, and don't forget to subscribe for more stories. Thank you, reading. So, here we go. Once upon a time, in the kingdom of Kapilvastu, lived King Sudhodana and Queen Mahamaya. The queen gave birth to a lovely boy at Lumbini Garden. The king and the queen named their son Siddhartha. Unfortunately, the queen died seven days later after the boy was born. When Siddhartha was growing up, a wise man named Kala Devala informed King Sadhodana that his son would witness things that would make him miserable and lead him to flee to the jungle. As a result, the king never let his son leave the royal walls. Siddhartha was a bright and cheerful boy who was very compassionate and caring. Siddhartha and his cousin Devadutta were walking in the palace one day. Devadutta observed a swan nearby and shot it down on the spot. Siddhartha was terrified when he saw the injured bird. He drew the arrow from the swan's body and applied medicinal herbs to the wound. His cousin wanted the bird as he shot him, but Siddhartha didn't agree. As a result, the two boys proceeded to court. In the court, the wise man said that the swan belonged to the person who saved it and not to the one who attempted to take the bird's life. Siddhartha matured into a young man. King Sadodana wed him to the beautiful princess Yashodhara. King Sadodana thought that after Siddhartha's marriage, he would never leave his home since he had a wife. Siddhartha, on the other hand, felt dissatisfied inside the palace walls. Let's take a walk outside the palace, the prince urged his servant Channa one day. On their walk, they came upon an elderly man who was hunched over. Siddhartha had never encountered an elderly person before. He asked Channa, What is that? This is an elderly gentleman, Channa replied. One day, we'll all be elderly, Siddhartha returned to his palace, distraught. Siddhartha went out of the palace again after a few days. This time, he saw a sick man who was wailing in pain. Why is that man crying, Channa? The prince wondered, having never seen a sick person before. He's unwell, and due to pain he is wailing, Channa responded. The prince was unhappy and returned to his palace. When Siddhartha stepped outside the palace the next time, he observed a group of people dragging a dead body. One day, we all will die, Jenna said to Siddhartha, explaining to the prince that he was seeing a dead person. Siddhartha knew the king had kept him in the palace to keep him safe from these possible dangers. Do we all have to go through this stage, get old, ill, and die, the prince wondered to himself. Do we not have any other options? Siddhartha stepped outside the place once more. He noticed a man with orange robes, shaved head, and a bowl in his hand. The man appeared to be in a very good mood. Who is that man, Jana? he inquired. That's a sensible man. He had abandoned everything and gone to the wilderness to seek happiness, Jana replied. The prince pondered all he had witnessed. After that, he decided to leave the palace in search of happiness. One night, while his wife and son were sleeping, Siddhartha secretly left the palace with his devoted servant, Chana. They walked together till they reached the Anama River. The prince removed his imperial garments there. He handed Chana his clothes and his horse to return to the palace. He then shaved his long hair, donned an orange robe, and walked out holding a bowl. Do you know the route to everlasting happiness? Siddhartha inquired of each person he met. 
nobody had an answer for him. Finally, Siddhartha sat beneath a Bodhi tree and attempted to solve the problem independently. He started meditating. Siddhartha's journey came to an end after several years. People referred to him as Gautama Buddha since he had matured into a knowledgeable man. Buddha cherished all birds and animals, and he treated them with compassion. Siddhartha's jealous cousin, Devadutta, once dispatched wild elephants to attack Buddha. On the other hand, the elephants knelt down in front of Buddha when they saw him. Gautama Buddha had a huge number of followers. He moved from place to place, sharing his knowledge with his followers and others. Gautam Buddha advocated that pleasure could be attained by being satisfied with what one had and treating all beings with kindness. When he returned to Kapilavastu, he was welcomed by the king, his father, his wife, and his son. Ananda, one of his relatives, became Gautam Buddha's devoted follower and took care of him as he grew older. Gautam Buddha continued to preach for another 45 years. Finally, in Kusanara, Gautam Buddha laid down beneath the sala trees and exhaled his last breath. What lesson will your child learn from this story? Your child will learn that pleasure can be attained by being satisfied with what one has and treating all beings with kindness. The End Good job, friends. Thank you so much for reading with me. Bye, I'll see you next time.